The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome uh, all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And uh, as always, it doesn't matter uh, whether you're making money or losing. All that matters is that you're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So... Uh, uh, Okay. Uh, I do want to respond to that. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll get that back. Anyway, uh, got a market on fire. And uh, what else do we have here? Down 155. On the, Is that right? Let's update that just to make sure. Yeah, down 155 on the S&P cash. Dow's down uh, 1,087. NASDAQ down 538. Uh, Russell uh, down 63. So pretty much along the board, 3 4%. NASDAQ, of course, worse of the bunch out here. And uh, what else can we say other than it's a dangerous market? Um, I do want to get into a few things, um, see what it is. The trend is your friend. We've uh, talked about how this is a bear market. Um, I talked a little bit about the risk reward uh, on Monday in the newsletter, and that is we were going a little higher or a whole lot lower, uh, but there was an 80% chance we were going up a little higher and a ton of uh, risk to the downside uh, if we were going lower. But uh, probably the most interesting thing today uh, was my, I think, was the newsletter before everything started happening. And I wanted to kind of get into that um, in the newsletter this morning. Uh, I had a bunch of charts, <clears throat> so let's get them up here. And uh, 201, they were all doing kind of the same thing. I'm watching uh, my uh, sector oscillator charts. And, yeah, were you bouncing off the lows? You were. But uh, to me, it was the trend lines that we were getting hit on about 25 of the 29 sectors uh, that I watch. Uh, the XME, right up to the trend line, we had almost all of these doing the same thing. The XRT, right back up to the trend line down. Uh, consumer staples, a little uh, less perfect, but this thing was actually a little bit, uh, a little bit more long in the tooth than some of the others. Uh, the de uh, defense sector, right back up at you. Uh, again, um, you probably need to be watching in the den or on YouTube or whatever. Uh, but uh, pretty nice uh, trend lines uh, that we went up and just kissed yesterday and didn't have a lot more volume. I wasn't getting a lot of signs that the bottom was going to fall out today. Uh, but the opportunity to go much higher, uh, you're going to need uh, something, some kind of catalyst. Uh, but uh, when every, I'm not going to say every, when nine out of 10 sectors, and I've got about, what, 20? I've got about 30 sector charts in every day. So I think 27 of the 30 had some kind of line, whether it was the junior uh, gold miners or uh, whether it was the uh, building material folks, uh, the REITs, every one of them. Um, the REITs actually uh, had maybe the only candle that was a little bit bearish going in 
So again, there wasn't a lot of signals out here other than we knew that we were going into these trend lines on the way down, the broker dealers, uh, the XLF, but just how many of these uh, we were in and looking at that were going right back up, the IBB, uh, the software sides, I'm just showing all of them here. Uh, so you can come back and look at them if you don't get the newsletter. But everything was pretty much right in these trend lines on the way back up. The internet, uh, PNQI uh, for that one, uh, the technology sector, all these things had just bounced up and were nothing more than dead cat bounces and a downtrend that we now see today. Uh, the cybersecurity stocks, well, there shouldn't be anything stronger than them today. Uh, and uh, they were kind of weak going into those. The semiconductors, just a hint that maybe things were going to be better. Uh, they did close just a hair above the trend line down yesterday. Uh, the Russell, uh, one of the better ones, and I like it because, of course, it's got darn near 2,000 stocks in it. I think 1,920 or something. Uh, but uh, certainly another one of these things where you just go in and go, okay, that's it. Uh, anyway, uh, oil services, OIH. Okay. Um, see what else says out here. He had just a little bit above that. We'll go through the responses today, but this is the charts this morning. Um, the one that actually looked fairly good was the XLE, but it's kind of hit the trend line on the way up. Uh, the down. Uh, Dow transports exactly on the trend line, uh, the Dow 30 on the trend line down, the NASDAQ right on the trend line on the way down, uh, the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, exactly the same thing, the SPIs, almost exactly. I haven't seen this, I don't think ever. I don't think I've seen, you know, 20 of these 30s all giving the kind of signal, much less 25 or 26, uh, hitting those trend lines on the way uh down. Uh, maybe that'll be something I'll ever do, but it's been 1998 since I've seen this. I wasn't bullish. I thought at best we did 4,100 on the S&P cash. Um, and the downside for options was showing something like 4,000. Uh, so today is a surprise, not only for me, uh, but option market makers were not, you know, they weren't very bullish higher than we closed yesterday. Uh, but they thought 4,000 was something that, that could uh, hold. Uh, so we've got something going on in the market. A lot of times, uh, if you're not a slave to the tape, by the time you wake up, it's another problem. Uh, but uh, you know what? There's always another trade. You don't always have to be in the market. And uh, you trade what you see, as Larry likes to say. I didn't hear anybody tell me that we were going to be down 1100 points in the Dow yesterday, but uh, a lot of people believe that you will know all of those things. I could see maybe a bit of a pullback. I was pretty sure we weren't going higher. Um, I was actually hoping for a rally into uh, this afternoon that got sold off, but uh, eh, you got Target. Target dropped the Baby Ruth in the punch bowl. They dropped the Chalupa. That's all it took. Everybody started to figure out. We'll be back in a minute. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 question about the XLE. Well, you got a light volume push higher this morning. Uh, you've got uh, a pretty bad uh, in, uh, in, in closing, or not in closing, a dark cloud cover uh, on uh, the highs here. You needed or wanted probably something in the neighborhood of 47 million shares uh, to the break higher. You had about half that. So, uh, you know, just the overall market, um, we've talked about it in the last couple of weeks when we've seen bear market raids on the market. Uh, and that is they sell what you can because a lot of stuff you can't sell at all. And that's not going to change. So I don't know what else you can do uh, other than uh, say that sometimes uh, if you've got to be long, maybe there's a good time to go fishing. I don't think until we get something. In the last few days, we talked about all the double repo patterns that I would have liked to have seen at the lows. We're probably going to start seeing some of those. But in the meantime, uh, let's uh, look at some of the... Uh, yeah, what is going on here? Eh, okay. I uh, wanted to see what some of the big stocks were doing in the volume. So far on Apple... Um, you uh, did get one day above the three by three yesterday. You're now back down. Uh, the previous low was $138.80 with 103, 183 million shares. You're only doing 62 million shares now. So when I've been talking about a low is not a low, until you retest that low on a lighter volume, this is what I'm kind of talking about. So could I be the most bearish person in the world right now? I could be, but it looks to me like uh, it's a market of stocks and not a stock market, at least for Apple. I would not be surprised to see some kind of rally into Friday's close, and that may be one potential play for me. Uh, Microsoft, same kind of thing. Got 51 million shares at $250. 51 million shares. We got 14 million shares today. So... Is it the end of the world? Well, certainly for some things. 
Uh, but uh, a low is not a low unless it's been retested on a lighter volume. Other than that, it's just a low that's probably going to get tested somewhere down the uh, road. But uh, this actually is probably better than uh, dragging out for a long time and making it problematic. So not as bad as one would think. Um, one of the reasons why I probably don't have any trades on today, although I saw that, is one, I didn't see a lot of signals. And two, uh, I'm not a big fan of being short at the very end of some kind of move. And I think maybe we're kind of there. I think maybe we see some kind of low maybe on Friday morning, sets up a little bit of rally on Friday afternoon, and then light volume all the way through next week. But uh, we shall see. But at the moment, uh, at least on a handful of stocks, uh, it's not the same kind of thing that we see. Uh, to, I always loved it uh, in the beginning. I always loved it uh, when sports announcers say, uh, the score did not represent the play of uh, the, the the game that we saw. I always love, always love that. Doesn't seem to matter, does it? But uh, maybe this is one of these things where uh, in the market that we are starting to see something that's a little bit of divergence and that might make some kind of low out here uh, that is viable for a little while. Uh, again, I'm looking for some kind of big change in the market when we come back from the three-day weekend. Um, I did send something to somebody during the break, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, uh, he says, okay, question about uh, actually NVIDIA. Uh, research, no, Wednesday, this markup is of suggested retail for NVIDIA cards has declined from a high of more 130% uh, in mid-21 to 78% January and 23% currently. Um well, yeah, it has, but I don't know how it affects NVIDIA. They weren't getting those uh, markups for the most part. They were making a lot more cards that were slightly more expensive with uh, different names on them uh, and capturing some of that. But at the same time, that was because there was a sh huge ship shortage and they couldn't ship everything they wanted. If they could ship all the $700 cards uh, that they wanted today, I think they'd be more than fine. Um, still a little bit of uh, problems, but as I said, the bigger problem I see in NVIDIA is that they've denounced all these new cards, and now everybody's kind of waiting. And we've talked about the Osborne effect uh, a great deal. But on this one, the same kind of thing. Uh, about half the volume of the last few days out here. So is it as bad as everybody thought? No. I would love for it to test like 162.50 on light volume. Uh, any move back above that may get us the kind of bear market leg that isn't more than or that is more than just a couple of days. Uh, so you know what? This is kind of at least in a small amount of time, uh, something that might end up being capitulation enough that we can have a, a rally uh, and have it for a little while, a little bit larger than I think. 877-927-6648. Uh, what else do we have out here? Let's take a look at AMD. Uh, a lot of these things are actually ma massively shorted. Uh, AMD um, kind of pulled back today, got to 104.22 uh, at a high <clears throat> and rolled over. But volume is only about half of what it was yesterday. Now, I would still love for this thing to come back down in the low 90s and give us a real clear signal uh, that the low is in. It's got a, a low at 83.27, but it continues to be shorted at 40 or 45 percent a day. It may never get there. How long have we looked at uh, stocks like uh, GME hold up because people just will not quit shorting it? Um, even on some of those stocks, which is kind of amazing. Uh, you would think uh, GameStop would have a, uh, a worse day today. If you took the name off the top of it and just looked at the chart and saw that the move back from March 29th had about half the energy of the move up from March 14th to that March 29th high, I think a lot of people would be shocked. And yes, it's a worthless company, but it doesn't matter. If everybody's going to be short the thing, 
People will uh, turn it into a Bitcoin or a Beanie Baby or a Tulip or a dot-com from 1999. It doesn't matter. Things that trade with zero value can still go higher. And this isn't a horrible chart, which is absolutely amazing. If, Like I said, a lot of times if you just look at charts without the company name on it, how would your perception of that actually change? Uh, I know everybody wants to, is looking out here and saying this is like uh, the worst thing in the world. But uh, generally, uh, when everybody's uh, afraid, you want to be kind of greedy. You want to be greedy when everybody's afraid. I think a lot of people are probably afraid to be back in a bit. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. As we come back, we're looking at some signs out here that may be a little contrary to what many think. And as I said, uh, lows are not lows until you, know, you repeat this about a thousand times till you get it right. Lows are not lows until they've been retested, especially in a bear market. But uh, you know what? They're selling some stuff, but some other stuff they are not. And... Uh, We'll look around and see what else they're not selling to any extent and stuff that might look a little bit better. Uh, one of the things I also thought was interesting on the day uh, was that uh, the TLT out here. Um, we were looking for some kind of, and here's the kind of bounce you start looking for. 
uh, in a bounce. As I said, uh, you want to look for all these days uh, below a three by three or a nine day moving average, a few days above them, and then a pullback. Now, it's not a lot of volume out here in the TLT, uh, but if you were short and thinking that maybe it was time to get out or looking for a signal, you get any close uh, in the neighborhoods of 116 and a half, 117 over the next couple of days in the TLT, and you're probably going to run back up to 120, 121. So that may put a lot of different color in the market than you see today. Uh, other stocks that uh, got blown apart um, uh, or uh, ETFs, um, some of them are not that bad. But again, I would love for the next couple of days, maybe into Friday morning, come back with very light volume. Um, in the IBB, you've got your initial bounce. You want it to pull back and have very light volume. Maybe it takes uh, the next couple of days. Maybe it takes the next week. But you could set up something very nice if we don't get the volume. Again, I'm not making a projection on that. I'm just saying that today, the last three or four days, the volume has done nothing but go down <laughs> as we got to the highs. Um, a reversal today with the uh, Dow down 1,100 points. You would think that probably you would get a little volume in some of these EFTs and you're not getting them. Uh, what does that mean? My guess is that there are some EFTs where everybody's throwing the baby out with the bathwater. But if we look at the spies today, last major low at 385, had 125 million shares in it. Uh, today, 60 million shares. So we're, you know, you're kind of just in the wick of that low. But for me, this is actually a fairly bullish signal in the short term. I'm not going to say the bear market is over. I am going to say, though, you could have a meaningful and long uh, move higher. Uh, we've talked about Wyckoff and James Wyckoff and how he had a term which was automatic rally. And that's a rally without any preparation or anything else. Uh, what he uh, traded were these bottoming signals on lighter volume where they bounced, then they came back and lighter volume again. And guess what? Everybody knew with half the volume that uh, there weren't that many people willing to throw the baby out with the bathwater this time. But uh, again, we're pretty close to a low out here. Everybody's fairly bearish. I don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. Uh, Warren Buffett uh, is great for saying that the stock market is a mechanism for giving people with no patience uh, money to the people that do have patience in the money. So I see nothing out here that says you want to get froggy today, but uh, a couple of days or maybe even into the end of next week, if you can hold these levels, if the volume all just kind of disappears, uh, it could happen at any time. I'm hoping for a Friday move so that we could pick up a bunch of calls and clean up. 877-927-6648. Uh, uh, what else do we have? Uh, can I look at gold? GLD. All that glitters is gold. Uh, let's do this. Uh, and draw it. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, it's just in line, but it doesn't look that bad. Um, I would have liked to seen a little lighter volume back at 168 in the GLD, but it's not bad. Uh, you wanted you wanted something less than 16 million shares, and you got it. Um, energy did decrease from the first leg down to the second leg down. You're probably somewhere around support. Uh, if the market starts moving and the Fed isn't as aggressive, maybe this is where gold could start moving. But just like everything else out here, there aren't a lot of good signals that tell you uh, to do much of anything at the moment. A uh, question from uh, Rick about Micron. So we'll look at that real quick. Uh, to two, and we got some other stuff out here. Uh -huh. Um, um, oh yeah. OK, 
Okay. Micron. Hey, you got kind of lighter volume. Last uh, move up, you gapped up on the 13th of May. You did so with uh, 23 million shares. Uh, you're down with 13 million shares today. So, you know, you have a fairly good low in Micron already. March 15th, you had 25 million shares at 68 bucks. You got down to 65.86 on 17 million shares. So seven million shares lighter. You even had one more retest out here. Uh, it did get 27 million shares, but most of that was from the open and higher, and then you gapped up the next day. So could you pull back a little bit? Um, I would love a, a $68 print on Micron to go long if volume remember uh, r remains incredibly light as it is today. But uh, again, I don't think that there's a lot of reason to get too froggy today. There's some money to be made, uh, but uh, it's probably not going to be today unless you're already short and you discovered. Then you will have made your money. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, question on CCJ. Again, uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Okay. Not bad. Um, you had 9 million shares at the last low. You got about 5 million shares now. Man, if this could get 21, 21 ish uh, this may be fairly good. I think energy is still going to be used. I don't think anybody's going to stop driving cars. May drive less. Uh, in this thing, I think China, when they get back going, I think there'll be a lot of energy used. I think right now it's just weak on the uh, COVID closures uh, in China. Uh, and just a, I think a lot of this stuff is a gift if you get an opportunity to buy it, uh, but not probably today. Question on UNG. Um, what do we have going on up here? Just a safety trade I really dislike. I mean, I hate the energy up from the May 10th low on this. No sign yet, but man, I probably would be taking my money and running. Uh, I don't know why this thing is up on such light volume. You would have been happier if it just went sideways on light volume and going up. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. You can email me at pathgift.com. Okay. Uh, Tara asks uh, what we should uh, look at in AMR. I don't see an edge either way out here. You're looking for some kind of signal. You have a higher high. You have a, a, a higher low. You have a lower high. And now you're going sideways. So I don't know how you... Say, you know, a, a, a boat that is stopped with no wind will make this a sailboat. You need at least a little bit of wind before you're going to figure out where you're going. And all this thing is doing is going sideways, not going lower, not going higher. So I'm going to say you're probably going to wait and sit back. And this is going to break out and have a big gap one way or the other and probably fade that gap move. If it gaps down, it's probably a buy. If it gaps up, it's probably a sell. But going sideways uh, in a triangle formation with uh, lower highs and higher lows, I don't know. I've never been able to come up with a great uh, read on those particular stocks. Um, as they say on Wall Street, change the name. That is, uh, there are a lot of other ships, a lot of other ships. There are a lot of other fish in the sea. I'm mixing my metaphors again. Uh, t -t -t okay. Okay. Uh, what do we have out here? Um, what's my read on this? I think a lot of people just want to get out of the market and uh, go to the Hamptons. So we may just be seeing people saying, you know what? I'm going to get out. I'm going to go enjoy my life at the Hamptons. I'm a big hedge fund. I'm going to go spend some of my ill-gotten money because I've been long uh, for forever. And you know what? I'll come back in June and thank again. But uh, yeah, I just don't see it. Uh, question about what the volume tells us. Right now, we're just doing 8.1 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. If you're interested in what I look at for volume, uh, email me at path at tfnn.com, and I'll be glad to give it to you. But this is a, a huge move on extremely light volume, even uh, for the total volume. And could we have double the volume in the last hour and 15 minutes that we have now? Has it ever happened before? I think maybe once or twice. It's exceedingly rare. But that might make me change my mind. But like I said, probably out of 20 years, the time that we doubled volume in the last hour and 15 minutes, which is what we need to do to get to the volume we had at the previous low, and even that would be a little bit shy, uh, is going to be, uh, I don't know. I think we probably have to be hit by a meteor. There probably have to be a launch of a nuclear weapon. I don't know what else that they could throw on this market to double the volume before the end of the day. But I would say the chances are, I'm going to say 
three percent, ninety-seven percent chance that we end up with twelve, maybe thirteen uh, billion shares on the day, uh, opposed to the sixteen, eighteen billion shares that we saw uh, on those lows before. So, again, if we're going to hit these lows on lighter volume, and that's a lot of the the worst stocks, the best stocks as we went through already. Not a lot of volume. QQQs, not a lot of volume. Let's check back in real quick and see. Okay. So what do we, we had 121 million shares. What do we have now? 52. I mean, what's the chances of us more than doubling that? That'd be 52. That'd be, what? That'd be 120% of the current volume in the last hour and 15 minutes. I don't know what what the headline would have to hit uh, to get that. We are back kind of rarely at the disc of the top of the queues out here. Do I think it's time to buy? No, but uh, I think we could get into that low 284.94 before Friday. And uh, that may be the washout that I've been looking for, which is a retest of the previous low on lighter volume. Now, that would be something that you could sink your teeth into. My guess is that nobody in the world wants to buy on Friday and maybe the reason that why you want to. Uh, so PLTR out here for Frank. Um, again, a lot of these stocks gap down. They've been on the sell side for a long time. You don't have a lot of volume today. I would still love for uh, PLTR to get below the three by three for a day or two and then by the next move higher if volume continues to be this light. Um, at best, you went sideways out here, but uh, you know what? You have, you know, if you could buy it under eight bucks, uh, could you get a pop to 10 bucks and make 20% on it? Yeah, I don't think I'd, I, yeah, I know that you're going to have huge amounts of resistance at 1050. So any buy in some of these things, you have to know uh, how many people are going to be hanging out when we do bounce. Uh, that want to sell. Okay, what else out here? Uh, okay. Two, two, two. Question about Williams Sonoma. Uh, probably on the basis of uh, the housing numbers this morning, uh, just gap down. Pretty brutal. Uh, some of these stocks are no, in the no-fly zone, uh, on the no-fly list, uh, and Certainly, if you blow through lows as you have today with Williams Sonoma, you're really looking for the next opportunity uh, in the lows that is fairly uh, out there. In this case, you blew through the 115 February 23rd low of 2021, got to 107.98. So you blew through that. So where's the next big low? Uh, $79.29 um, on the longer term. So, yeah, could you get another 20 bucks off this? Again, uh, just know that certain parts of the market can bounce and certain parts cannot. And if you're tied to homes, um, problematic. Uh, do I see any reason to start bottom fishing on Walmart or on Target? Uh, I see absolutely no reason. The only good thing you can say about all this action is that you finally got back to this high volume day when uh, Walmart had one of the biggest days it's ever had. That was on July 7th of 2020. Uh, the high of that day was 123. Uh, you got to 121 with 26 million shares. Uh, that move up and a gap that happened a few days later was on 31 million shares. So am I predicting the end of the world for Walmart? No. Yeah, there's just too many people out there like Buffett that might probably sneak along. Are you going to make a lot of money on it? Probably not in the next quarter. Okay, could you make a little? Could, but I think there's better fish in the sea for the bounce. Uh, when we come back, it'll be the two-minute warning. Out here, keep a close eye on the volumes as we go into the day. Uh, anything today? Probably not. We continue to see very light volume. Uh, I would love to see just the most despondent people in the world Friday morning. Back in a minute. 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we come back uh, for the wrap up of the show, do not let your heart be troubled, neither at the heights of the highest prices or at the lowest lows, there's always tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, everybody tends to get wrapped up uh, in what's happening now. And uh, yeah, this is really a good time to start thinking about what happens next. And why I can't guarantee you very light volume lows in the market. We got some right now. So we'll see how the market closes. Does that mean that we don't have to test lows? The answer is no. I wanted to test the lows. Nothing could be better than if we hold these light volume lows, retest them, and close back above them. And so far, that pattern actually looks fairly good. So I think everybody's looking at a... Uh, uh, a market in which we're more than likely going to make some kind of low. It's probably going to be an important low, I mean in time. And at that point, most people will say the bear market's over. We'll get another month or two down the line and the next big move will come. Uh, and we'll probably be able to predict that move. Right now, we're seeing a lot of noise. Uh, as uh, Steve Rhodes said in the show before us, 
There's probably a lot of other things going on out here that can destroy technicals uh, in the short term. But if we bust apart the rest of the market uh, into some of these other sectors, it looks a lot cleaner. And again, the volume out here is surprisingly low. We're going into the summer where volume is going to shrink too. And there's the old chestnut that uh, you never want to be short, quiet market. Um, anyway, we will uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. Everybody's doing that today when they have to. How painful is that? We'll be back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.